because you are the greatest power, the greatest manifester, the greatest creator on the planet. I'm going to give you some tough love around money and wealth that we have to stretch, we have to grow, we have to be challenged. It's all a part of the design. Why are you here? <laughs> you have the ability to create whatever it is your heart desires. Hey, it is Maggie Rita here for a, another live training for you around health, wealth, happiness, freedom, all the things that your heart desires and how to actually have that transpire in your life because you are the greatest power, the greatest manifester, the greatest creator on the planet. It is you. You are the source of everything that you want in your life. You are the source and the creator of whatever happens in your life. I'm actually going to give you some tough love today. I'm going to give you some tough love around money and wealth and all things consciousness and everything your heart desires because you can have it all. Unfortunately, people have unrealistic expectations, not about what they can achieve, but about how they can achieve it. Really, unfortunately, we have bred um, generations of people who have this entitlement mentality. Now, I'm not saying that this is you, but look, all of us want to have it easy. All of us do. I would love to sit on my tushy all day long and just have everything fall in my lap. Wouldn't that be amazing for a little bit? But I also love to be challenged. I also love to grow. I also love to, to push my boundaries, to try new things, to learn new skills. And our soul yearns to grow and expand. And in order for us to grow and expand, there needs to be a payoff, the whole what's in it for me thing. So if everything was super simple and it just landed in your lap, no effort necessary whatsoever, it would be really boring for our soul. Our soul would pretty much, the reason for existence would no longer be here. Um, it's actually a part of the design that we have to stretch, we have to grow, we have to be challenged. It's all a part of the design. So if you are resisting the design that is perfect for what you wanted here on the planet, then why are you here? <laughs> if you are resisting the design, then why are you here? Have you noticed that those people who seem to have, according to our society's standards, have it all, as in all the money, I mean, when most people talk about having it all, it's all about the money. But have you noticed how many people who have all the money, they get other challenges thrown at them? So they don't have the easy life necessarily. And if they don't have challenges thrown at them, then they are choosing to, um, to have challenges in their life, as in they are focused on their purpose and their mission and contribution and all that comes with challenge. If you don't choose your challenges, they will choose you. If you don't choose challenges that, are, um, that have a high frequency and that are going to get you to where you want to go, then the universe is going to throw challenges your way because your soul yearns for that growth and that expansion. So if you're not choosing growth and expansion, then you're going to be given challenges that will either make you grow and expand or you will expire. You are either growing or you're dying. There's no, there's no alternative to that. You're either one or the other. You can grow fast, you can grow slow, but if you're not growing, you're dying. And this is why it's so, so important that you choose high quality challenges that get you from where you are to where you want to be, that you embrace this perfect paradigm that you created and participated in it 150%, 1,000%. 
Because if you don't, the challenges that come your way will not be great quality. And you will be, um, you will find yourself in places that you never wanted to be. So what's it going to be? Are you going to choose your challenges, high quality ones, or are you going to allow them to be chosen for you? Believe me, it won't be pretty if you do it that way. So, hey, Krista. Awesome, awesome. So don't condemn your challenges. Don't resist your challenges. Embrace them full on. Be grateful for them. Learn to be grateful for the challenges that you have because you are bigger than any challenge you will ever face. There is no problem you are ever given that you cannot find a solution for. That is not the way the universe works. So we're going to dive into a lot more this morning and there is going to be some tough love today. So, and I think that's why I've actually lost a lot of viewers because I started giving tough love when I transformed my brand um, a couple of years ago. And if you are still here, if you are still listening to me, then you are one of the rare few who are ready to hear what it takes, who actually do have what it takes. Because very few people do have what it takes. They, they grabbed a hold of the law of attraction and thought, that's great. I can sit on my butt cake all day long and just think happy thoughts and my life will be fantastic. Well, I wish it were that way, but it ain't. And most people don't want to hear that. They don't want to do the hard work. They don't want to do the internal work. They don't want to face their fears. They don't want to look deep inside of them and unpack the, the years, the decades of belief systems the belief systems that they've adopted from generations past. Remember that equation I gave you last week? That was literally, you have four grandparents. You have eight great-grandparents. You have 16 great-great-grandparents. If you go all the way down the line, like I think when you get to level eight or nine, I'm not sure which, there's like 2,000 people who were grandparents like great 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 grandparents so you have all this programming from all that lineage that's been passed down throughout the cellular memory you are carrying so much programming from generations past ancestors from your past lives now that takes work to unpack that. And some people need to do more unpacking than others. And this is where most people just give up. It's just all too hard. They don't even want to hear it. So if you are here listening to this, then you are one of the very few who are actually going to become the person you need to be to achieve whatever it is that your heart desires. Because you have the power. You have the ability to create whatever it is your heart desires. You have so much power within you. And when I do um, my next live in the online entrepreneurs uh, group, online business for spiritual entrepreneurs group, um, I'm actually going to be doing a lot of EFT tapping on owning your power, on releasing the stories, the paradigms, the things that are holding you back on being able to step up and do whatever it takes because that is what it takes, is being willing to step up and do whatever it takes on having a, no, a can-do, no matter what, whatever it takes kind of attitude. So what we need to do as a collective is, this is super important, I really want you to hear this, is we need to stop setting goals according to the old paradigms. Unfortunately, we've been all sold lies. So there is a lot of truth in the way goals have been set in the past, but there's also key pieces missing. So we've been taught to set goals according to oh, what car do you want to drive and what house do you want to buy and, you know, what beautiful lifestyle do you want to live? And that if you don't 
have this kind of lifestyle, then you haven't made it yet, sunshine. Then you're just a wannabe. If your life doesn't look like the Hollywood superstars, then sorry, you ain't got it. You, you've got to work harder. And this is our benchmark for success. What a load of bullshit. Seriously? Like, that's their definition of success? Now, for some people, that's going to make them happy. And I am not saying that success does not include money and financial wealth. Shit, yeah, it does. Absolutely, it does. Um, you know, life, money is not the key. But hell, my, life is sure a hell of a lot easier when you got it. And it's sure a hell of a lot more fun when you've got a lot of it. So there's nothing wrong with wanting to have a lot of money. But since when did we lose sight of the fulfillment, of the satisfaction, of the joy, of the contribution, of being able to support others and help others as a benchmark for success? So money is certainly a tool and a, and a, a very powerful resource to be able to achieve success. But it's not the defining benchmark for success. It's not the defining element for success. Take money out of the equation as defining success in your life because it's not about the money. Your success is not about the freaking money. Take that out of the equation altogether. As far as determining how successful you are. It is not important in that equation. The reason money is important is to help you to be the best that you can be, is to, yes, enjoy the life that you desire, whatever that looks like. And that may be pitching your freaking tent or a teepee down at the, la the, the local national park. That may be what makes you happy, not some mansion in the middle of Manhattan. That certainly wouldn't make me happy. That just, oh, I can't think of anything worse. Well, yes, I can think of a lot of things that are worse, but that is definitely not my definition of happiness. So the reason I'm saying that we have been led and, and to set goals in the wrong way is that we've been told what success looks like. Chuck that out. Chuck it out now. Never ascribe to anybody ever telling you what success should look like for you. I want you to go deep inside. I want you to connect to the essence of who you truly are. And I want you to find within you what makes you happy. Because success and happiness is an inside job. It's got nothing to do with your external circumstances. You can be happy with absolutely nothing. Because happiness is a choice. It's not a destination. It's not a result. Happiness is a choice. Now, is, a life, is life a lot less stressful and a lot more fun when you have wealth? Hell yes. But stop thinking that that is the definition of success because it ain't. Success is made up of a whole lot of things. And I believe that Warren Buffett was asked several years ago, what was his definition of success? And he just said, are you happy? Are you happy? Because there are a shit ton of people, I'm swearing a lot today, sorry. But there are a ton of people on the planet who have a lot of money and they're miserable. Why? Because they've been sold a lie as to what success is supposed to look like. So you need to start asking yourself, for your goals, what's your mission? What's your purpose? What, what contribution are you, you here to make? What service are you here to provide? What solution are you going to provide for your tribe, your community? There is a tribe and a community out there for you, who you are here to serve. You came here with a purpose. Now, your community and your tribe may be five people, it may be 10 people, it may be a thousand people, it may be a million people, 
Who knows? What do you feel drawn to? The people you are here to serve, maybe your family and your children. Or it may be something bigger than that. Your family, your tribe, may be a whole ton of people. But that's determined not by anybody else but you. <clears throat> so it's important that you know who you are, that you are in full alignment with whatever goals you set. And this is where another place where so many people go wrong. They set goals according to these benchmarks, these, um, these, um, these directives that we've been given by the standards that society have said that oh, this is how you need to, um, to talk about success. This is what it looks like. Who says? Who made up that rule? We know that that doesn't make people happy necessarily. Some people are happy with that. But a lot of people aren't. They're freaking miserable. They spend years, decades, sacrificing time with their family, sacrificing their health, sacrificing their mental and spiritual and emotional well-being, climbing this ladder to get to the top and find out it was leaning against the wrong wall. They're standing at the top looking at what they've created and going, is this it? Why have I worked so hard? It feels empty. It feels soulless because society doesn't have the answers for you. Only you have the answers for you. So you need to go inside and decide what does success look like and feel like for you and define that, never let it go. That's the vision that you must hold on to and pursue relentlessly. Know what it is that you stand for. What do you stand for? What difference is it that you want to make in the world? Mother Teresa was not a rich woman financially. She had a lot of money at her disposal. She flew first class because others, um, others paid for, you know, governments paid for her travel and all the rest of it. But she didn't personally have a lot of wealth or assets. But she was probably one of the richest people on the planet because she found her purpose and she lived her purpose every day. And to many, her life would have looked quite wretched because she was working with the sick in Calcutta, with those who were dying, with children who were abandoned. I don't know that my soul could actually live with that every single day. But that was her purpose. That was her mission. And she was such an incredibly strong woman who was admired by so many. Not because she was financially wealthy, because she was rich in ways that most people will never, ever experience. So what is it that you stand for? Build your belief, your conviction in who you are, in your ability to create whatever it is your heart desires. Build that belief, that trust, that faith in you. Build that belief, that trust, that faith in the universe that is supporting you. Build that belief, that faith, that trust that everything is happening and unfolding and you are getting closer every day to whatever your heart desires. Build that belief, that faith, that trust, that this is what it looks like while it's happening, that nothing is wrong, that everything is perfect. When you can show up every day, every day, you must show up every day, but when you can show up every day with that level of faith, going, even though this looks like chaos right now and it looks like it's falling apart, it doesn't look like anything that I wanted and I, and I, I, thought I would have been further down the track by now and it just doesn't seem to be happening.
because what we what you see on the surface is just the tip of the iceberg literally you have no idea what's happening underneath the surface that is supporting you that is uplifting you that is empowering you where the way it's unfolding piece by piece and you can't even see what's happening down there you have to learn to trust it and believe it and just embody that faith and trust on such a level that when you show up every day, no matter what it looks like in reality, you have the faith and the belief and you are rock solid and knowing that it is unfolding because it is the doubt that actually slows you down. It is the fear that slows you down. It is the belief that it's not happening. It's your questioning that slows you down. When you drop into that place of faith and trust and knowing, and you just put one foot in front of the other in faith, another foot in front of the other in faith, that's when you accelerate your progress. That's when you start to understand that it is always unfolding always unfolding that life is happening for you not to you remember that life is happening for you not to you and whatever shows up is a result of your thoughts yesterday and the day before and the day before that and the belief systems that you have and that you are a work in progress and that you just need to keep doing the work doing the work doing the work doing the work and that it's all perfect when you can absolutely embrace that, oh my Lord, it will blow your mind how things just start to pick up and accelerate and it snowballs. And that too takes practice. It's a skill. It's not something that just happens because we've been conditioned out of it. We are born into this world knowing that all things are perfect. We are born into this beautiful, amazing planet that is heaven on earth, knowing just how powerful we are, knowing that just the, the creators that we are, the manifestors that we are. But then through our environment and all the things that we're exposed to, we're conditioned out of it. So it's the remembering. You are remembering how powerful you are. When you listen to this, this is spirit speaking to you saying, remember, 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 remember. And why do you need to hear this over and over and over? Because that is the nature of the ego. Because that is the nature of our senses and what we experience, we think is so solid and it's not. So how do you become unstoppable? You don't stop. You don't stop growing. You don't stop learning. You don't stop the personal development work. You don't stop creating. And you don't allow anything to stand in your way. Let go of needing external circumstances to be different. Know that everything is the way it is because it is the way it is. And what you resist persists. If you're condemning what is, how can you get from here to where you want to be if you can keep condemning where you are. Do you see that? If you keep saying this is wrong, 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 this is wrong. This is life. It's all perfect. Drop into the space of gratitude. Whatever learnings you have right now, because remember, everything is just feedback. Everything is just you learning to navigate this thing called life which you made really complicated. You created this puzzle. I'll stop calling it a game because that's almost irreverent. It kind of, um, it diminishes what this incredible experience is. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle that you get to put together and mold and figure out. It is an artwork. Even better, it is an artwork that you are creating every single day. See your life, see your vision, see your dreams as the artwork that you are creating. Do you think that any great artist sat at that canvas, took the paint, actually some of them did, so <laughs> some of them did do this, but the ones who are truly celebrated for the magnificence of their art, do you think they got the cans of paint, 
took them all and just chucked them at the canvas and went, oh, there's my masterpiece. Thanks very much. Five seconds. Done. No. The, the artworks, the, the, the statues, the incredible paintings and all the artworks that are celebrated, they took time to evolve and create. They took, um, they took focus and energy and they took the master craftsmen mastering their particular skill and talent to be able to create that masterpiece. So why do you expect your masterpiece to be any freaking different? Why are you expecting your masterpiece to just land in front of you magically without you putting any effort into it? And I'm not saying that you are. As I said, if you are here listening to this, then I'm just validating your journey for you. I'm saying that just because it's been hard and just because it still seems hard doesn't mean it's wrong. It's actually perfect because you are the master craftsman. You are the master creator at work. And that work is intricate. It is specific. It is unique to you. And it takes time. Any masterpiece takes time. Give yourself time. Know what it is that your heart desires. Because whatever your soul and your heart, whatever lights your soul and your heart up, that is a piece, that is a very big piece of your masterpiece. And if you are not following that, then maybe it's time to rethink your goals, your dreams, your aspirations. Because the visions that you have, the, the dreams that you have, the things that light you up, they're a part of the masterpiece that you are here to create. So create it. Stop allowing all the bullshit and the, the, what society is telling you and these um, random sort of ideas that you've been sold as to what success looks like to determine your goals, your dreams, and what you think it should look like. Go inside. Know who you are. Understand what it is that you desire. What will make you happy, fulfilled, satisfied? And then create your masterpiece from that. And there is a saying that money follows your bliss. Well, I don't think it's quite that simple. At least in my experience, it's not that simple. There are skills that you need to develop. There are things that you need to learn. There is a journey that you need to take. So when you find your bliss, absolutely, it's a big piece of the puzzle. And you definitely need to follow your bliss. The money will follow with the, the strategies that you learn, with the pieces of the puzzle that you put together with the work that you put in, with your heart and soul pouring into your bliss, you will uncover the formula that will bring you the wealth. Does it have to be hard? No, but it ain't going to be a piece of cake. And it will take time. And for some people, it will take a short amount of time. For some people, it'll take a longer amount of time. It's all okay. Stop condemning it. Stop judging it by somebody else's expectations. Drop your expectations and learn to embrace the whole journey. If you've enjoyed this video and you want more information on how to achieve health, wealth and happiness in your life, then come and join the Wealth Consciousness Movement Facebook group where I share live videos, information, interviews with other experts in the spiritual entrepreneurs field to help you to be the best that you can be and to achieve all your heart's desires. So come and join us. The link is below.